Jesus. Oh, boy. <laughs> What's up, everyone? This is Jason Tucker. This is Deb P. Watercooler. Episode number 174. Today's topic is creating better WordPress navigation. Let's go around the room real quick and get everyone introduced. We go in alphabetic order. Mr. John Brown, tell us all about yourself. Hey, everybody. Uh, John Brown. I run a company called Nine Seeds. I'm also the uh, lead organizer of the original Maui WordPress meetup group and the WordCamp Maui that happened last year. Uh, we do custom WordPress development at Nine Seeds. Uh, I'm totally lost. Somebody else. Sweet. What about you, Robert? All you Robert? Could say was who you were. Yeah. How do you, you have to let me go first? I don't, I don't know. I need to just uh, copy what I'm going to say. Robert, tell us all about yourself. My name's Robert Dahl. I'm a WordPress designer in Vancouver, Canada. Um, I'm... Uh, I have a, a, a Twitter account, and I'm just here for the free food. Sweet. Russ, tell us all about somebody else. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, I'm Russell Aaron. I run the WordCamp Las Vegas 2015-2016, uh, and I do the WordPress meetup group. What is oh, in your nice. hand? Scissors oh. and a napkin. Oh, what the hell? Okay. Don't, don't run with them. What about you, Sarah? That's why I have the napkin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah. Uh, uh, um, hi, I'm Sarah Weefald. I'm the production manager at Zeek Interactive. Uh, I am the facilitator of the OC WordPress Design Meetup, and uh, oh, I'm also on the organizing committee for OC WordCamp 2016 under our supreme leader, David Margowski. Woohoo! Nice. Oh, it's Margowski, not Arshin. No. Arshin? I get all the Davids mixed up. There yeah, like there's a lot of Davids. Davids. And they all have different last names that have a lot of letters in them. <laughs> so some of, like, some oh. of them are Davids, but most of them are Daves. Yeah. What about you, Say? What about me, though, really? Let's say you. Um, I am named Say Reed, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, sometimes. And I make WordPress, teach WordPress, love WordPress, say Media on all the things. chip pa chip All right. Steve, what about you? I am Steve Zengen. I'm the founder of Zeek Interactive, and I run the OC WordPress Meetup. Awesome. Tonight, really, wait, really tonight, tonight is the developer meetup at Crash Labs, run by Brandon and Jeff. Nice. That's in Costa Mesa, California, correct? Yes. Awesome. I'm Jason Tucker. You can find me Jason Tucker on Twitter. I blog over at jasontucker.us and wpmedia.pro. <clears throat> so today we're going to be talking about, what, nav walkers, and, and that's it, right? Is, is that what we're doing today, Russ? Exactly. What would you say? Nav walkers. walkers. Walk all the things. Walker scripts. Yeah, have no, you ever like, watched like what, The Star Walking Wars? Dead? It's The Walking Dead. Like in Star Wars? No. Sorry, like Steve. I, I, I'm sorry that I, I defined what a, a navigation menu is. <laughs> you defined it by calling it a nav walker? Yeah. Like, walker walker is, the, is the technical term you can use to to hook into the, the nav system in, in WordPress and, and make Steve it Steve wants every single listener who isn't super geeky with WordPress to tune out instantly. That's what Steve just said <laughs> right there. You, Jason went there first. I, I did. did. I, I did. did. Okay. Let's back it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was my backup noise. So we have navigations Beep. typically at the top of the website. Uh huh. It's usually uh, set up so that when you're... Um, when you're wanting to take all the different pages and posts and whatnot, you'll put them into a menu and then be able to have that navigation show on the website. Uh, oh, time out. Right, time I, out. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. It's I, not... Website. I, I, think, I think usually is not accurate. Okay, it depends on which crappy theme you bought. Thank you. <laughs> um, I would like to say, though, that, because I like to do that, um, that navigation is not just menus. I know we're talking specifically what? a little more about menus, but navigation... Videos that, that or what are you what are you doing with other what other things are you? Doing I mean, technically, videos? every button you click is potentially navigation somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. that's it's, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because it's, you're navigating. It's the collective yeah. interface and experience of navigating. According like to Wikipedia, your site. No, really? not through Wikipedia. According to this, my brain. AKA Wiki Sarah, <laughs> so, which is so, the greatest I mean, wiki ever. It, it goes back to kind of basic UX, right? You don't want. People to need like a sextant. Remember those to navigate your site. Right. Boom! Right. <laughs> Just that right was so bad. bad. Yeah. If but, if someone needs a map to get through your site, you you did it wrong. 
Yeah, but well, see, that's why I kind of wanted to expand this a little bit, because I think we definitely need to talk about menus, super important, but I also want to get to talking about the the navigation as a whole, because it's menus are kind of like the, the base of that, but there's a lot that goes along with navigation. So, anyway. so, so last week I had a client, and they were trying to pick out a theme, and so they were going through and like every theme had a, like a right side or a left side or a top side or a bottom side. And I just wanted to open up the conversation about where was A, the best place to put your navigation. I think it's always the top, but a lot of themes that are coming out have been having a right side or a left side navigation. And you Maybe like 2015? To... Well, I'm, yeah, I, I'm but, actually... But, but, you, but you have to have a, you have to click on a plus or a minus to open or expand it. So I would just want to have a conversation about what's a good, better navigation to have. I think we missed a step, and I'm going to back up to what Say was saying. And I know okay. that that's rare here on the water cooler, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> but I think, I, think, I think before you even talk about the technical stuff, you have to plan out what the navigation is going to be because the navigation yeah. has to match a certain purpose. Yes. As right. the first and thing it I needs to be more clients. than just the menu. It's the yeah. UX of the entire site. Right. Yeah. yeah. And right. it's really an organization of all of the content because the content is the most important thing. And so you really have to do that first um, before you just willy-nilly start making menus that go on for days. It's, it's a crucial to map out that information as if you were writing a really great term paper. Okay. So Russ brought up a point about, like, collapsed menus and stuff, and more and more we're doing responsive first type design, right? Mm -hmm. And so more and more sites you're seeing where you land on the site and the main menu that you're used to seeing isn't even visible. Hey, and I'm going to argue that that's a good thing. And I'm going to say that because what you should be doing is when somebody lands on your site, most of the time there's something you want them to do or to see, whether it's a blog or a, or, or a marketing site or whatever else. That should be front and center no matter what. And if people want to navigate into things and dig deep, then it's totally fine to hide those things underneath a little plus sign or a, well, or well, a, a mo mobile first coming. mobile first philosophy forces you to figure out what's most critical in your site and and that it may be navigation in some cases it may be not but you have to figure out what do you want the, the user to see first and I think that's what you're saying John yeah exactly so Menu, uh, mobile uh, proliferation I would just like to argue across that. the board. Mobile proliferation across the board has made it so that people are more apt to actually click a condensed menu because we're more used to that with mobile, uh, the mobile layout. So before, maybe a year ago, even two years ago, if you had a collapsed menu, no one's gonna know what that is except for the geeky people who are gonna know what a hamburger is, and. Um, their hamburger being the little three-lined icon that releases... There was a UX it. study recently that that hamburger is the single most recognizable icon on the web at this point. Well, that's because... <laughs> that's like, awesome. Everyone uh, knows that, what that is. That's no, because of mobile I think, I think and the fact three... that mobile has moved forward and conditioned us all. So that's what I'm saying, is that but, a collapsed menu used to be completely like as if it was hidden, no one would ever find it. But now a collapsed menu has become... Um, something that's a little more standard that people can be like, oh, where's the menu? There it is. Click. And Ru Russ, Russ, you had a differing opinion. Well, yeah. So I, I, I clearly agree that when somebody lands on your site, you want to have like a hero image or like a hero box. I totally understand that. But no. when somebody is not necessarily. But, I like six sliders. But, Go on. But, yeah, sure. <laughs> but so when when somebody is like searching for an answer and they Google your site and it comes up. I want to be able to go to the FAQ section or to see other things. I don't necessarily want to fill out your thing to get your email newsletter. So I would just like to say that having a, a decent menu that's that's a little bit shown instead of completely hidden is better than completely hiding it altogether. Uh, wh so what about you... having... <laughs> no, uh, like, uh, yeah, we have these three hamburger menus, but... There was a lot of uh, uh, talk about having the actual word menu right beside the hamburger symbol, which would actually, um, uh, uh, for people that didn't know what that m icon was, it would lead them to like, oh, this is actually the menu. Well, in uh, a lot of the default WordPress themes, it is not a hamburger. It is the word menu yeah. without yeah. a hamburger. Yeah. I just yeah. lost that argument to a client who insisted I put menu next we to the hamburger. 
We switch well, from like a hamburger menu. Yeah, we switch from a hamburger menu to a plus sign, and then from a plus sign to the word menu. And the so word menu actually gets clicked more than any of those other ones. Just got them. What's, sign, what's your demographic? Yeah. And we also have it floating in my case, on the page, universal. and it floats nonstop. No so, matter where you're at on the page, you always have a floating menu icon. Steve, I think you're yeah. making a really good point in terms of target audience and who mm -hmm. you're targeting. If your target is techie people, then you're going to be totally fine with something that's a little more iconic. Iconic. Uh, but if you're if you have people who are like, for example, with you, Jason, who's like, you know, they're church people, so they're maybe not as tech. That just did not come out right. That <laughs> didn't sound right at all. <laughs> not no, come out right. it's, it's a demographic. That's yeah. why you're entire demographic. I was about to talk about how church, church people, people cannot know, know what a hamburger is. Before, would be pretty savvy. <laughs> well, let me explain a little bit. Say you're you're totally right though. It's it's because there's it's a larger demographic of people. So there's it's a, it's a large range of people. So it's not Thank just you. a tech Thank person or just me. somebody. No, it, it makes perfect sense. Continue. The nicest just, save I've ever heard. It was going downward if I was going to continue that. <laughs> uh, I had to stop. Uh, but yeah. exactly that. So it is very important to understand both what information you're presenting and um, who you're presenting that information to and who you need to do that because sometimes you do need to spell things out. But, yeah. I mean... We've just spent, you know, 12 minutes talking about collapsed menus. So what well, about... No, what we... Uh, but hang on a second. What we've talked about is the thought process behind that goes into what you put on your website. And here, here's, here's the opposite of that that I hear from a lot of my clients and friends when they're building a WordPress site is, what's the best theme, right? Oh or they'll God, start out, question. they'll start out by picking a theme and then they'll kind of shoehorn their content into it. <laughs> That's never the right approach. Because Never. that theme's going to have a very specific way that it lays out the navigation. you got to make the theme work for you, not you work for the theme. Make that theme your bitch. Right, I just oh, saw right. a question. I that's not right. I did. What's the I did. fastest <laughs> WordPress theme, right? Like, that's the decision-making point, is what's the fastest theme, and then I'll shoehorn my content into it. Aveda, it's obviously. Well, Come on. Um, the business so needs, your personal needs, or whatever you're trying to communicate is the important part. Shoehorn, Start by the way, the way the, shoehorn's the word of the day. No, it's not. I just, <laughs> I just picked really, it. It's not even the word of the century or like the year or even it's like the word of like nineteen, like forty-seven. I think. Hey, John. So that that link that you posted regarding um yeah. regarding the number of items in the menu is that still hold true? I haven't got to dig through that. Much. Yeah. So this is a a track ticket. I just posted it in an internal chat. Track uh -huh. ticket one four one three four, and this has been around for six years, and the old menu system, since we got custom menus long, long ago in WordPress 3 or whatever, has always had a problem with very large menu systems. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple sites where you have like 12 top-level menus, and then each of those has like triple sub-menus. I have a and problem And it's crazy navigation, menu but ironically <laughs> enough, this is the same university I was mentioning before. They have a huge amount of departments and mm -hmm. content that they need to actually be able to navigate to. And the problem ha was back then that if you had too many menu items, you couldn't save the menu. You could edit it, but then when you went to hit the save button, it failed. Yep. Um, and it didn't always fail at 16. It depended on your PHP. So memory are you talking about something that stuff. was in the past or is now a problem? It's still, still a problem. Fixed. Now, the, the, the kind of Band-Aid fix that doesn't really work for everybody is that the customizer doesn't have this problem because the customizer... If you're editing your menus on the front end, you won't run into this. It's so only the traditional back end. Menu land in the admin, I call it menu land for real. Yeah. Um, if you're in menu land, um, it will ha still have that problem. But what's what's what are we topping out at? Like I've made some pretty extensive menus, and never had that problem. So what are you talking about? Like a hundred items? What is it, it topping varies. out at? Uh, That's not it a varies. good answer. No, it I know, but it, it varies. On, it, it depends. This is what made no, it so hard to track <laughs> down. It can't was, depend in that point. It's like there's a breaking point. There's a specific I, point. There is, and it depends on your PHP INI settings on your particular server. Oh, so I would say, yeah, on, the, really, on the simplest of servers, different. if you're hosting on like $1.99 a month hosting, it's probably 16 menu items because you're probably running on like 32 megs of memory. But let's. But usually it's around 100, 120. Anyway, so it's not really a problem for the majority of people because if you Very are true. doing um, that type of massive site, the likelihood is, if you're doing it right, hashtag doing it right, um, you're not going to have 
dollar ninety nine hosting, which I don't actually think exists anymore. Um, it and does actually, but anyway. that many menus at the same time. So the likelihood is, if you have that many menus and that much content, you and you're having that problem, you need to like get better hosting. R regardless, so, regardless but, of what you're paying but, on hosting, uh, hang on one second. If you, regardless of what you're paying on hosting, if you have sixteen menu items in a menu you need to ask different questions, right? You need to ask how you can organize your content differently. Sorry, Robert, right. I didn't cut you off. But, but okay, what, I, I mean, I, I came here with a, uh, um, uh, with, a, with a sole purpose of talking about, yeah, you have a really large um, uh, WordPress site. How do you control how big that menu is? And one of the things that, I did with the uh, uh, this big Art Wolf site was we actually created a network wide menu which was shown on all other sites um, and the uh, I'm going to tweet out the uh, the link to the uh, to the plugin so we decided what is actually important to all of the sub sites within our network and then we decided uh, to have a secondary menu for those subsites that only had menu items pertaining to that subsite. It wasn't the, because we didn't want to have a menu with 300 different options for every single subsite, but yeah. we still wanted to have one menu that kind of ruled them all. So that's like the next layer above the site, like the, just one site. So like for us, we did the we did, we did that same type of thing, but for um for like the child sites or child the child pages for a particular page. So if you were on a one one page, you had a navigation over on the left or right hand side, or maybe just on the top, that allowed you to navigate through those you know child sites of the parent, which made it easy because you could just jump between siblings, you know, this page to this page to this page without having to go to the main navigation and then go down from there. So, yeah, I mean, if, you have, if you're running a huge network, that seems like the, the best way to go for being able to jump between sites. And, and, and then we, we basically said, okay, what is, uh, I, I mean, basically this plugin works by taking the, um, uh, taking the, the main menu uh, and then putting it in all the sub menus. So really, you actually do have five menus on the site. Right. They're just all mirrored. I feel but, like we're getting really bogged down in this example. No, no. What, what I'm trying to say is is that we decided what was important to that menu because it would be replicated everywhere. So we had mm. to get really clear about what we wanted in there. Yeah. It gets back to the idea that like you need to filter your content, right? So you have a primary menu that's simple, and then you yeah. have context-specific menus on categories or sub-pages or whatever you need. Um, often people get an idea that you have to have like one-click access to really, really deep linked content. And the truth is, is that if people are going to try to get to that deep link content, they're going to do it via Google, not via your, right. your third-level sub-menu. That's but right. Right. Um, okay, so I really feel like we've talked a lot about this example. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, but, but this is a, I have an attention span that's like well, this. this long. But this is this is all important because we've all experienced this from our clients, right? If you if you unleash these tools into the hands of your clients without this education, you run into problems. Yeah. Well, exactly. n not only not only that, but if you if your client wants to have like ten thousand different drop downs, they're gonna install something like Uber Menu or Mega Menu, and then it just becomes a nightmare even more from there, you know. So I think when you start managing your clients and telling them real expectations of what should be in a menu and what shouldn't be, I think you can have a better site because of it. But, but and, jo so and I agree with you. Are we talking to developers who are making sites, or are we talking to people? All who the above. Yes. All the above. Yes. And John said it perfectly, right? Not everything on your site has to be accessible from a menu. Yes, John Brown, you. <laughs> actually, actually, in John Brown, in John Brown's menu, there's actually a link to the 404 page. I don't know if you guys have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool, though. But, <laughs> but let's say you have a, a blog that's been going on since 2002 or or 2000. Uh, you the know, like a long time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're not gonna link to every single post in that menu. That would just be no, silly. No, you, basically. you would just you would just link to the the category or to the archive yeah. or something. Right. Yeah. So, 
but, but and then, then again, we're... you know, if you if you've been blogging since 2012, maybe you have 45 categories. So what do you do then? You know, do you put yeah, you all build that? a hierarchy of categories? If you've and been blogging since 2002, well, you probably have figured some of this out. That's let's bring it back to organizing content because that's yeah. a good point. Like if you yeah. have 45 categories, you you don't have like that's crazy. Like you, you don't have at that point you don't have focus. content in a useful way. Right. You you well, yeah. lost focus. There's and and you need to like pare all of that down into something organizable. Well, and if you've got that many categories, you should be using tags instead. Yeah, fair enough. So uh, all site organization aside, um, when we're talking about menus, it's not necessarily just the theme that dictates that because there are an extendable ex there are a lot of plugins out there that can do stuff. And Russ, you mentioned one of like Uber Menu or Mega Menu, and these can be really dangerous because of all the crazy stuff they can do, and they can actually um, make your site um, your add to your load time and whatnot because the menus themselves are loading all of this different stuff and different colors and, and images and whatever. And so it's just important to keep the menu and the navigation as simplified as possible so that it doesn't become a drag on your site both from an organizational standpoint and a customer standpoint, but also just from a, you know, technology standpoint. So let's let's define for the audience what a mega menu is. Well, it's, it's a plugin. No, it, it, well, it's, it's a menu. It's a menu where you can actually have pictures, you can have small lists, you can have descriptions. Uh, you really can have. Uh, it, it, I, it's almost like a, a multimedia menu because it's more than just. A, a title word for that menu. Yep. There are some cool plugins for that that aren't as crazy as Uber Menu or Mega Menu, like this menu image one that'll be in the links. Um, that just allows you to add a little icon. And that can be very helpful for sites to give it a little bit of, you know, something. And because Font Awesome is out there these days, it doesn't um, count against you in terms of um, SEO or having graphics as your navigation menu. So those can be cool. great options. And this is kind of an issue that we're looking at. Uh, the place I work at, we're looking at um, trying to come up with a way that would give us additional columns within a menu, so that way we can have something that is a fairly long menu because we've only we only have like three higher higher up um, menu or menu items, and then each one of them has you know twenty different things in there. Well, at some point, you know that needs to give, and we just I don't want to end up with like a Windows Start menu where like the whole screen <laughs> turns into a menu, but I want something at least is more na you know. It's easy to navigate as well as it's something that uh, people that are on mobile can use. When you, I don't know why you don't want that, Jason. That worked out really well for Microsoft. <laughs> menus, if you have, for example, one of those menus that expand forever, and then you do have menu, and it's a collapsed menu, and you open it up, it, that menu is now you know 20 feet long of scroll, and that is both terrible navigation and very confusing and is covering everything, and no one can find anything. So it's really important to make sure that your menus work on mobile as in addition to just the desktop. Yep. So, you should always, on your laptop. so you should always test. Yeah, but yeah. but the test but the it. problem with having multiple columns is is like do you do like do you do alphabetically by right by left or by top by bottom? I mean like that. Well we have that, categories within our menu, so we we yeah, already right. have kind of a child parent relationship there with, with those. It's just making it so that they're you know easier to look at instead of this really long list. But but I'm just saying like when you open up that mega menu and you have like columns like does it go one two three from top to bottom or does it go one two three from left to right I mean it like, depends like, if you're navigating yeah. in the U S or Israel <laughs> <laughs> that that that's a completely valid statement to yep. be perfectly honest the, the I, other I, I mean the, uh, you know I was half joking but there are languages that read right to left yeah, yeah. and and WordPress uh, uh, provides support for that so why shouldn't you know like it's something that needs to be thought about so I guess what's I, a good I, mega menu without installing the mega menu that's you know hosted by Envato and it's super huge crazy I would say don't make a mega menu for most intents and purposes you need to drill down into something something more simpler something more simpler that's not but me. but say I have simpler. seen I have seen a really you know sophisticated and, and well used mega menu 
I mean, it. it yeah, well, I think that's I think probably more of are, the exception than the rule. I yes, really do. Yes. When we're talking about yeah. the people who uh, are, are our audience, the people who are watching this video, if you're a UI expert or you're like a mega developer and you can do that and you can put all that stuff together, that's great. But I think most of the people that we're talking to are people who are DIY or developers who are doing things for clients who have particular ideas about something. And I think for most of those people, the answer to that question is not have the exception of a mega menu, but actually to look back at your content and simplify. Maybe do uh, sub menus within uh, categories or pages using a sidebar um, or menus that appear. Um, you know, you can have now with the um, visual, the visibility of the widgets that show up on different pages, you can really customize different menus that show up in your sidebars or even your footers. So using that type of navigation, which is a smarter navigation than just shoving everything into the menu and then expecting everyone to go tracing and then if they're, you know, are they on a thing and does, you know, does the menu stay open? That can, that can cause a lot of problems. It's yeah. the exception so that it's done well. What, one thing to understand about the whole mega menu thing for some people who might not be familiar with them, because I'm willing to bet a lot of people out there aren't, is the idea of a mega menu is not to stuff a whole bunch of stuff in your menu, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's to have a menu that's rich. Yeah. So what I mean by I that is that if you John. look at menu, menu, mega menu, it's when you click on a menu link, and then instead of just getting a text link, you maybe get two text links with two images on them, or but but you get a tile or a, or a window that shows you more than you might get, more content than you would get if you just had a list of text links. And that's where the advantage comes in. Is, is it lets you enrich what those links are about or what that text callout is about with icons or images or um, something more interactive than here's a text link, click on it. So, and if you're going to do something like that, you have to spend a lot of time mapping your content and a lot of time with your UI and understanding what that is. And you can yeah. do it well, and it can yeah. be done well, but then a lot of your time needs to be spent in developing that menu. Uh, I would agree with uh, both of you, actually. Um, the other um, menu plugin I wanted to bring up was uh, menu social icons, which uh, allow you to actually put an icon with your with your menu. So let's say you wanted a uh, a contact drop down or a contact menu, and you wanted like your uh, your Twitter um, at symbol, and then you have the the, the Twitter icon, and then at Robert Dahl or uh, or what have you, and I found that it that worked out really well for uh, a number of uh, projects I've been working on. Nice. Um, well, and, uh, is that is that preferable to actually putting the image tag in the name of the the menu item itself? Sorry. Because uh, you can put you can put image HTML in the in the menu display. Right. Well, this was um, a non HTML version of that. That's an easy way to do that. Non encoders. No. No, no, this was a uh, um, uh, using Font Awesome's icons. So you basically just typed in your, um, uh, you, your icon, and then you, um, or, or you typed in your uh, Twitter username, and then you picked the icon uh, from the menu, and boom, it was there. Cool. Like, there, no, no coding really required. I, I want to give one... I want to give one quick mention to uh, Foundation, which is the um, the framework that we use to build all of our themes. It has an off canvas menu already built into the uh, to the library. So so the way we collapse our menus when you go into responsive is we either do a hamburger menu or some sort of symbol, and that side drawer for, that that slides out from the left is already built into the system. Nice. Fancy. There's a, a plugin called Sticky Menu um, that allows you to have your menu stick at the top. Um, which can be useful if you have a lot of content going on or if you want something to be uh, visible at all times. It is really helpful. You know, it's actually a cognitive thing. So the same part of your brain lights up when someone is lost on a website as someone who's lost in real life, like geographically. And so creating that kind of cognitive dissonance for your customers can actually make them feel the fear and the anxiety of being lost, and they don't actually even know why. So it is extremely important to have that navigation. That's also a good um, endorsement for having uh, footer navigation, which we didn't even talk about, and having some sort of secondary menu at the bottom so that people, wherever they are, 
um, in your site can find some sort of menu without having to scroll all the way up to the top. Nice. Say I, you always bring the you always bring the bring the, 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 the best stuff at the very end of the uh, the thing and then we, we all, of our user, all of our listeners are already gone. Uh, <laughs> Wait for the end. <laughs> well, we, we, we gotta close up here folks, so make sure you go to our website at jpwarcore.com, click on the links there and subscribe. If you have any other links folks that are in the chat here, feel free to put them in there and we'll put them into the show notes. Thank you all for being on here. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, there is a comment box down on the bottom of the site as well as on YouTube, so do that. Thank you, folks. You have a good rest of your day. Bye. 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 Bye.